How far can you get in one week of Stardew Valley? This is a question I've had for the longest time and I've kind of always wanted to challenge myself to it. The issue is, uh, I suck at the game. So I had to turn to people who are actually good at it. This is Harbu, the absolute goat of Stardew Valley. And he managed to accomplish the impossible goal of making 40 million gold in one year. And the entire thing was documented in an insane step-by-step day-by-day guide with some of the hardest Stardew Valley money-making techniques ever done. A and I'm gonna try follow it to see how far can a normal person go following this and how far can I get in one week of Stardew Valley. The goals for the challenge are this. Using the guide's min-max techniques, I wanted to see if I could, in one in-game week, reach level 50 in the mines, make at least 15,000 in total earnings, and be set up as much as possible for a productive farm. Whether this is through having money, having sprinklers, or just having high enough XP and levels. Before we get into the challenge, I just want to give a huge thank you to Fave Farm for sponsoring today's video. Fave Farm is the latest love letter to Life Sim Games from Phoenix Labs, and has you escape into the insanely adorable world of Azoria. Create a character and live out your own fairy fantasy life as you learn to farm, fish, explore, and raise animals in your own cozy homestead. It really feels like Phoenix Labs have put inclusivity at the forefront of Fae Farm, and I think that's amazing. I adore the depth of character design Fae Farm has. Like, you can really tell that they've thought about everything. You can choose your body type, voice, skin tones, pronouns. It really ticks all the boxes. There's endless things to see and discover in the world of Azoria. As you explore, make sure to look out for cooking and crafting recipes. You might even find some undiscovered secrets. And with the charming music, there's literally nothing stopping you from getting lost in your new home in Fay Farm. You can check out Fay Farm with the link in the description below. Once again, a massive thank you to Fay Farm for sponsoring today's video. And now, back to the challenge. To begin with, I decided to play through a week just as I normally would, sort of as a baseline for the experiment, to then compare to the min-max week. We started a farm, created a character, and I forgot to turn on animation cancelling. Live split- oh, I didn't fucking turn auto hotkey on. Day one started off as any other. Farm character skipped the intro, and here we are, and instantly I'd forgotten everything. How the fuck do you play Stardew Valley? Eventually I started clearing out a plot of land for crops, collecting some wood and then left my farm right away. I went foraging for any small goods we could find on the first day for some extra energy. Scavenged through people's rubbish bins, don't, don't judge me, and found a measly group of spring onions. Now I'm not a total pleb at this game, I do have some early game money making knowledge that I sometimes use in casual playthroughs. So I sold the forageables and the parsnip seeds, bought 17 potato seeds, and when I got back into the farm, something just kicked off in my ADHD riddled brain, where at the very last second I decided 17 potato seeds just wasn't enough to plant on the first day of our casual playthrough. So I went back to Piers and sold everything and got, I got one more potato seed. We planted our 18 potatoes, and I just kind of spent the rest of the day collecting wood for chess because tomorrow I planned on hitting up Willy for his rod and needed a place to store the fish. And with that, our first day was done. Look, we made 140 bucks on the first day. I feel like that's not too bad. Day two was your classic stuff. We checked Willy's totally not menacing, I've got something for you note. Then we just watered our plant. Day two, we checked Willy's pervy letter, watered our plants, and oh my god, I have no energy. So we pulled a Linus and ate some weeds we found on the ground, and off to the beach we went, where we were met with Willy's pole. Afterwards, I stopped off at Clint's to buy a piece of copper, and then threw it on the ground before picking it up again. See, this unlocks the recipe furnace, which I thought could be useful later. Uh, side note, we didn't use it. 
I then headed off to the mountains to do some fishing, because I saw in a video that this was the best spot for it in the entire map. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I did it anyways. I took a chest with me to store everything I needed, since I only had 12 spots in my inventory, and I planned on driving at least two species of fish to extinction this week, as I wanted that bank. After fishing for hours, we passed out at the mountains and only got up two levels in fishing. Day three was catfishing day, and so I stood here for hours. Level 2 in fishing, which my chat had warned me would not be a high enough level to catch a catfish, as they are notoriously difficult to get before level 5. Oh, catfish! Catfish! That was really hard. But like any good YouTuber, I was delusional that I could be successful. Catfish were a good early game moneymaker, earning 200 gold per base level fish, which would help us reach our goal of 15,000 total earnings. But um, we didn't catch any. And so day three went on till we eventually passed out while fishing once again. I also realized it had been two days in a row now where I sold absolutely nothing, which uh, w wasn't good. Day four, I realized I left my watering can up at the mountain lake chest, wasting a good two or so hours to retrieve it. But in doing so, I realized just how much I'd collected in my fishing endeavors. The game plan then became this, do another day of fishing and sell everything I had collected to tomorrow, so I could purchase copious amounts of salads for our descent into the mines on day 5. But that was tomorrow, and in the meantime, we needed to water our potatoes. But it will be on a... <laughs> oh no. I can't get through! I... I guess we're taking the long way around. Crops watered, it was back to the mountain for some fishing. We scored an emerald for a nice 200 gold pocket change. Oh! Let's go! And with our fourth day coming to an end, we passed out at the mountains. Day five, mine day. We began with a bit of foraging for extra energy in the mines. Since we didn't sell any of the fish last night, we had to run back and forth between willies to sell everything. At this point, we had made a pitiful 569 gold. So I was really hoping that these fish would give me a big payday. We earned enough for 8 salads, and at 4pm, god that's so late, we entered the mines for the first time. The first few levels went well, as we made it down to level 7 in only a matter of minutes. While the overall goal of the mines was level 50, in my mind I wanted to reach level 20 on the first day. I thought that would set me up well for the final two days ahead, and when I hit level 10 at 8pm, I was confident. Dude! You actually were gonna hit level- dude, we're actually gonna hit level uh, 20. That was until we hit level 14, an infested level where we had to kill all the monsters with the equivalent of a blunt butter knife. The whole endeavor was insanity, like seeing your grandma try to eat corn without her dentures in, futile and, and sad. As I tried to clear the final slimes, my time for day 5 was running out. I felt hard done by as my luck in the early stages was all unraveled by some rip-off green jello. Dude, that was such a fucking scam! It meant we had only made it 10 levels on our first day into the mines. On the penultimate day of our first week, we once again forgot our watering can at the mountains, and it was only at 10am where we eventually got back to the mines. We had a little bit of luck today, so I was hoping to avoid any infested levels early on, but... Alas, another infested level to set us back. Luckily this time, it was much smaller than earlier. But as we all know, size isn't what's most important, and this level still set us back hours. We hit level 25 for the day, and I decided to head back home to sell some goods for tomorrow. At the end of day 6, for our casual run, I was feeling pretty good but we still had to get down another 25 levels in one day to hit our mining goal. Day 7 started off with harvesting the potatoes I had honestly completely forgotten about, check the luck for mining and... Fuck. And so the day was set out. We had to get down another 25 levels with spirits that were pretty pissed off at us. And while we gave it our best shot, we would we were just not set up for it really. We fought bravely, mined in the depths with all our heart, but at level 36, we eventually ran out of food. And what was a valiant effort that I was proud of, we had to call it 14 levels short of our goal. But I think that's it. 
let's head back to the farm. I think that's as far as we could go. In the twilight hours of our chill week, I sold all the remaining items I had, just to see how much our total earnings would come to. We ended up with 7,500 gold, which I must say, not a bad effort. But all of this was just our casual week, our baseline for the experiment. Next came the real challenge. Next was seeing how far we could get following the greatest Stardew players in the world in their Min Max strategy guide. Week two, we had the same goals from last week. I also installed a mod UI info suite to help us with XP and levels. Cause yeah, I, I wasn't going to remember all that. And this week we were following the guide, which had a literal step-by-step -step breakdown on how to complete each day. But I promise you, it didn't make it any easier. Our goals only for day one were to get fiber, 25 stone, 50 to 100 wood, 10 coal, level one mining, and 1,200 gold. And if we couldn't get this, we would have to reset the day. We started off with cutting down the trees in the hopes to get 50 wood for a chest. We then went on a massive loop around the map to find forageables and to stop by Clint's for the copper ore furnace trick. Nothing out of the ordinary so far. And so our day continued towards our goal, chopping trees, breaking stone, when a realization of the first major barrier hit me. We, we, need, we need coal. How do we get coal? You can actually get the 10 coal on your farm alone, but most min-maxers use what's called a map predictor, a mod that displays the results of the RNG of your seed, making it easier to find things like coals, ores, or even ladders in the mine. But me being stubborn, I didn't want to rely on a mod, which meant that I just kind of had to hit every rock and hope that one of them gave me coal and wow, 9 p.m., almost no energy, and we have we two, two pieces of coal. Okay, day one, part two. We went with somewhat of the same route, except this time we actually managed to somehow find five pieces of coal, and I, I just kind of settled with that. I wasn't going to get any better. But there was still the issue of making 1,200 gold, and since I pretty much knew I wasn't good enough to make that money from foraging or any other means, I only had one option, clay farming. If you don't know what clay farming is, a super simple explanation is that clay in Stardew spawns in a pattern, and if you follow this pattern, you're guaranteed to hoe up clay, which sells for a whopping 20 gold a pot, baby. So you can effectively just sit there all day farming away at this pattern and making loads of bank selling the clay. A few issues with this though is, um, I had no idea how to clay farm. One up, two right. Here, so I pretty much just have to have my chat teach me how to do this live. Two to the right, this one. Let's go. The issue this day was to get 1,200 gold. We needed to get 60 clay. And by 11.30 PM, we, 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 had, we had 17. I spent the rest of the day just kind of learning how to clay farm, knowing I wouldn't hit the goal, just so I could be prepared for the eventual Okay, new game plan. Chop the wood for a chest, get the forageables we need, sell them for extra money, stop off at Clint's for the coal, and now head to the beach for clay farming. This time, I was efficient. I had chat's help, and I looked like a prime Shawnee do out there. And at 2 p.m., we had the 60 clay we needed. We spent the rest of the day collecting the stone, wood, and forageables we needed. Forget the coal, we don't need the coal. And even though we had already abandoned following the guide exactly, we made 1500 gold on day one. 1500, let's go! So finally, after an hour and a half of playing, 
we were actually on to day two. God damn it, it's harder than day one. Today our goal was to hit level five in one day of fishing. Because at level five, you get the Fisher upgrade, which gives you 25% profit and makes fishing way easier. But level five in one day is close to impossible. That's 2,150 XP or the equivalent of catching 166 sardines. Or with math that I'm not gonna tell you because it will put you to sleep, I worked it out to be about 50 perfect catches in one day. I got my furnace recipe from Clint, grabbed Willy's rod, and we were off to fishing. And I was here for a real time hour. The first day, I barely hit level one. Shit. Second attempt, I got to the beach way early at 7 a.m. We were popping back some performance enhancing trout soups to help with the fishing, but once again, we were nowhere near on track for level five. And according to the guide, we would need to hit level two by 12 p.m. so we could upgrade to an iridium rod. Otherwise, it was pointless. So being halfway through level one at 1.40 p.m., it wasn't good enough. Okay, our third attempt at this, and at this point, I, I was losing hope. I had given up on level 5 in one day, and was really just hoping to hit level 2 before 12pm. At least I managed to fish up the last 5 pieces of coal we needed for the furnace. Eventually, I hit level 2 at 1.20pm, and I just... close enough. So, it was time for another game plan shuffle. I brought the Iridium Rod for 2000 gold, bought a boatload of bait, and just used the rest of the day to fish because tomorrow we needed a lot of gold and our luck was starting to look up when the last fish of the day, we got a diamond. A diamond? So now we just had to sell everything for a decent amount of cash on day three. Dude, are you serious? Day three was meant to be a catfish day because the guide wanted me to get 9,050 gold to upgrade to an iron pickaxe. But since we were only playing for a week, I really only needed to upgrade to a copper. Meaning if we wanted to upgrade our pick today, we would need to purchase 45 copper from Clint. Meaning we would need 3,375 gold. And seeing how catfishing went last time, I decided to scrap that and just head down to Willy's for some extra fish. Then sold it all for our first profits. And it was... It, it was nowhere near the amount that I thought we would get. We then ran up, gave a rusty spoon to Gunther for an extra 250 gold, sold what we collected from treasure chests to Clint, and in the end, we were still three copper short. On restart seven, we spend a bit more time fishing at the beach, managing to catch some higher quality fish. And this time around, when we went to Clint's, we were, we were, we were one coal short by two gold. Until a chat member reminded me we aren't actually getting the iron pick, so we only need five coal. So the rest of the day was just us smelting our copper and fishing away. So since now we had the copper and coal for an upgrade, we now needed another 2,000 gold to purchase it. The guide wanted us to get the pickaxe today, so it was ready for the first day the mines opened up. But I decided I probably wouldn't need the copper pick till the second day, and instead delayed getting the upgrade, choosing to just make as much cash money as possible for the rest of day three. A catfish! Thinking I'd surely pulled enough fish in, we headed down to Willy's, needing that 2,000 gold for tomorrow. Getting nowhere near, I resorted back to our trusty clay farming. We just needed that first bit of clay. Just, just one piece to start the pattern. Just, just one, just one, just one clay. Yeah, we didn't get the 2,000 gold. On restart, Eight. We sold off some of the items you can't sell at the stores in the morning, did our fishing, donated our spoon, and brought all of the copper we needed from Clint. And this time, we only needed a thousand gold from the rest of the day. Knowing I had a good amount of items in the shipping bin, I went catfishing the rest of the day while smelting our copper. I actually ended up hitting level five fishing this time, which felt like a personal battle inside me had been perfect, won. Perfect, perfect. Let's go level five fishing, baby. And I realized at this point, we had already hit the same amount of gold as our first week. So we were obviously doing way better. 
I decided to pass out for the night as to maximize the amount of fish profits because with level 5 fishing, we got that 25% profit boost. Day 4, we're off to Willy's to sell our fish. With the 25% profit upgrade, we managed to hit 2,000 pretty easily. We dropped off the pickaxe to Clint, and I can hear what you're thinking right now. Nino, the mine's open tomorrow, and it takes two days to upgrade an item. How are you going to go down the mines without a pickaxe? Oh, silly viewer. See, Stardew has this amazing feature where any save can be turned into a multiplayer's farm simply by purchasing a cabin from Robin. And when a second player logs into the game, say with a PlayStation 4 controller they have lying around, that second player is gifted a fresh set of tools, which they can leave in a chest for player one to pick up. It's so fucking over. Okay, so restart nine, we just did the exact same thing before the game crashed, except this time we weren't running the game through Smappy. The rest of the day I just spent fishing, foraging, and sold off anything we found in treasure chests. And finally, it was time for our descent into the mines. On the fifth day, Marnie greeted us with a stray cat who I named after a member of chat, grabbed some extra forageables along the way, and I remembered I left a chest outside the mine that I wanted to bring inside. Okay, so we named a cat after a chat member, safely grabbed the chest, and finally, we were into the mines. At this point, we were at 10,000 gold, so while getting down to level 50 was the first goal, collecting enough ore and goods along the way to hit 15,000 total earnings was always in the back of my mind. We blasted through the first few levels, but already at level 3, I realized I had no energy. Dude, our energy's almost out! What the hell? Apparently I started the day with only half energy and since I recorded this section on a different day, I just didn't realize. We scraped through to level 10, surviving off the algae we peeled from the slime's corpses. And at that point, we decided to take an early trip to the star drop to stock up on some succulent salad greens to refresh us down in the caves. The rest of the day went surprisingly well. It felt like our luck was turning a tide in our favor. We found ores, ladders just spawned in front of us, and we even had luck on the dreaded level 19. While I didn't get the chance to sell all the goods we had collected like I wanted to, with 20 levels, I felt like I had a good footing for the next two days to reach level 50, especially because tomorrow was Copper Pickaxe Day. Day 6 was the day to pick up our newly made copper pickaxe, but since Clint doesn't open till 9, we just went scavenging through the neighbor's garbage. Yeah, we're following the guide very loosely. Eventually, Clint was open and we had our copper pick in hand. We also had the chance to sell a lot of the ore we got from the previous day of mining. The spirits were in our favor this day and we hit level 31 before 6 p.m. But now we're in the dark. And these levels were where my stress started to rise, as I never actually found a glow ring along the way. Our first levels in the Great Earth Zones were incredibly lucky though, as we made it down five levels in two minutes. The Copper Pickaxe was a massive upgrade compared to the first week, as I felt the speed I was getting made me just zoom through some of the harder areas. Our biggest hangup was that we just had to randomly click in the dark when we couldn't find the ladder to get to the next level. And before you know it, we were down to level 40. Let's go! I had leveled up earlier in the mines, so I just decided to continue the day till I passed out, as leveling up gives you the max energy the next morning. It did mean I had to sacrifice selling anything in the shipping bin though, meaning if I wanted to hit that 15,000 gold, I was leaving it to the final day. Going into the final day, we had 12,500 total earnings and only had another 10 levels to go into the mine. I decided to take down all the food I needed and even created a few staircases as a backup plan. This was the final day and I wasn't gonna take any risks. Down the mines we sped at a pace I had never mined before. Even my chat was starting to notice the improvements I had made in our short time of playing this challenge. We had one close encounter where my live stream chat reminded me of my energy. Thank you chat, thank you. And then just like that, 
we made it to level 49, the final level of our one week descent. Level 50 is one away. You know what? I'm not even gonna use my staircases. <laughs> I had a whole dramatic build up ready to go. We had done it. Level 50 on our seventh day. And honestly, I truly feel confident enough where if I tried this challenge a few more times, I feel like I could make it to level 80. The rest of the day we spent trying to reach our second goal of 15,000. We sold all our goods that we found in the mine and I thought it would be a good idea to utilize our level five fishing. So we spent the rest of the night by the water, processing just how far I had come in my journey. See, at this point, I'm not sure it bothered me if I hit all my goals, because really, I came out of this a better player, a better star doer, a player who had a better appreciation for this game and those who have mastered it. And as I reflected on our journey, our final day came to an end. How much did we earn? Oh, wait, wait, 4,000? 16,766. We did it. We actually did it. All our goals were complete. We hit level 50 in the mines. We smashed 15,000 earnings. And yeah, our farm didn't look perfect, but on day eight, we had 6,000 gold to spend on potatoes, which got us 120 seeds to start our farm. So I would give that final goal a, a B minus pass. So the final question is, was it worth it? Hell no, dude. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything in this video was filmed over my Twitch. So if you want to get involved in future live streams, please join us over there. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. I'm, 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 I'm gonna go lay down.